Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Greg Reeve. I'm one of the facilitators for the Link Data for Beginners track of the LD4 2020 conference. This session is a lightning talk with presenter Adam Cohen. Um, before I hand it over to him uh, to introduce himself and present, uh, I wanted to let you, everyone, know that we'll field questions after his talk. The webinar has a Q&A button that you can use to enter your questions. And then after his talk, um, me and Lisa, the other f session facilitator, will ask your qu questions out loud for Adam to answer. So Adam, I'm going to stop sharing and let you take it away. All right. Let's just find it. And everyone can see that all right? Looks great. Awesome. All right. So hello, my name is Adam Cohen, and for the last year I worked as an academic library resident at the University of Alberta Library, aiding in the transition of their cataloging department to working in linked data. My position was the first position at UAL that specifically focused on linked data projects full time. And while our work in this domain had been going on for nearly three years prior, there were still lots of uncertainty and confusion around linked data for my colleague throughout the library system. During the last year, I had many interactions with colleagues where I usually get responses that boil down to confusion or intimidation in regards to linked data, as represented in the title of my presentation. This is, of course, no fault of my own colleagues, but speaks to a more general issue of how we communicate about linked data to our less technically minded colleagues who don't work in technical services. Noticing these feelings of uncertainty in my colleagues, as well as my own difficulties in talking about and teaching linked data, were what prompted me to create this presentation and maybe bring the topic of how to teach it more to the forefront of discussions around linked data. As Carlson et al. state in linked data for the perplexed librarian, our failure to grow this audience is only matched by our field's inability to communicate the practical opportunities of linked data to others in the GLAM community. And this really sums up my feelings about why teaching library colleagues about linked data is worthwhile. Linked data has the opportunity to be an incredible boon in the world of libraries and adjacent information professions, but it's difficult to communicate its benefits if we don't take care in how we discuss it with library administration and the rest of our colleagues. Michael Uschel writes that there were two related reasons that early adopters abandoned the semantic web. One, it was perceived as being too complicated, and two, practitioners didn't understand it. While I would argue that we, the practitioners, have been able to get past this, many of our colleagues have not, and that could jeopardize their own adoption of linked data. And I speak of adoption here not in a tangible way, but in the sense of getting on board with a concept or topic. The perceived complication, and don't get me wrong, it is a difficult topic of linked data and the various negative emotions that come with that really create a barrier for us as, their, as the teachers and our colleagues as the learners when it comes to teaching or talking about linked data. And this barrier can take a while to get through. And as I'm sure many of you can attest to, we are all extremely busy as librarians and library staff, which creates another barrier because people just can't devote the time to trying to grasp the concepts of linked data. And this makes our job as linked data professionals that much harder because we're still, for the most part, in the stage of trying to sell the concept of linked data and its benefits to our libraries and institutions. And if we can't sell it to our staff and library administration, then we'll never get buy-in for the various projects that we know are so important. So I've talked a little bit about why it's so important to think about how we teach linked data, but let's take a step back and discuss why technology such as linked data can be difficult to teach. So I think we can all agree here that teaching technology is difficult, right? And as librarians, we have likely been struggling with this since the inception of libraries. And the library world itself is constantly evolving with new technologies and those that champion those technologies are most often tasked with teaching it to the uninitiated. But in many cases, those teaching are so fully engrossed with said technology that they forget that not everybody is in on the same level as they are. In essence, we're nerds in regards to linked data. Williams 2018 refers to us specifically as linked data nerds, which I think is a term for us to embrace. But in saying that, we need to be mindful that our knowledge isn't universal and not everybody has the capacity to become nerds like us. So, there's, But there's always a case to be said that a little bit of nerdy enthusiasm can be infectious under the right circumstances. Another point against us is that cataloging and metadata, the area of linked data is so often lumped into, can be a fairly dense and confusing field for even fellow librarians. And of course, doesn't help that, at least in my case, library school doesn't give you much in the way of options to learn about and engage with those topics. 
As a further complication to this, library formats such as MARC are already difficult enough to teach, but we have the luxury of them being library specific and thus much easier to relate to in a sense. Linked data, on the other hand, was not built with libraries in mind, so it can be harder to relate to those in libraries because the concepts aren't something many people are used to working with. So given these difficulties in teaching technology like linked data, how do we go about teaching it in an easy and understandable way? So in coming up with this presentation, I decided to address this topic in a couple ways. I originally wanted this to be much more interactive, but with the current way of things, that isn't really an option. So I'm going to introduce a couple of pedagogical theories while weaving in my own experiences and what I found works and doesn't. A lot of what I'm about to talk about revolves around the fairly simple idea of just being aware of your audience. Are they technical staff, public services staff, or are they even affiliated with the library at all? If they're technical staff, then they can probably be given more in-depth technical knowledge. And you can talk about things like RDF or Sparkle or triple stores in more detail, as that's what they're likely to interact with more. Public services staff, though, don't exactly need you to go into such technical detail, but instead will likely need more, be more interested in how linked data might affect search and reference. And this, of course, doesn't mean you, can get in, you can't get into more technical aspects. It's just important to try not to overwhelm your audience and instead encourage those that are interested to keep looking into it. So thinking about your audience and what information is most relevant to them can help to alleviate potential comments of why does linked data matter to me, which can be a mindset that really hinders learning. And lastly, I mentioned that I was not involved with the library because I've personally made the mistake of going into too much detail in front of a room full of undergrad students who were interested in the library but had no real experience with the world of cataloging. And as you can probably imagine, that didn't go too well, but I do consider it a really important learning moment for myself. So now I'm going to try and frame some suggestions for how to approach teaching linked data or even any library technology around a couple of pedagogical theories. The first revolves around the idea of balancing cognitive load which really just means that we shouldn't overwhelm our learners with too much information all at once. Now, of course, we don't always have a lot of time in library instruction sessions or conference presentations, but it is something to keep in mind. One thing that we can do to help limit the detrimental effects of too much cognitive load is to just limit what we teach in a given session. Maybe instead of trying to cram in everything about linked data into one presentation, it's better to pick and choose what we teach so as to help it stick a little bit better. In my own experience, providing an overview and some solid this is why linked data matters in the library examples can really go a long way. Related to balancing cognitive load is the concept of germane load, which is kind of the good cognitive load that allows for building long-term knowledge. Activities that promote germane load, such as hands-on exercises or relevant examples, can allow for learners to make these connections. I personally have had success using analogies to describe linked data as it allows for people to make connections to things they already understand. One analogy that I often use likens linked data to a map with cities and towns as data points with roads connecting or not connecting them. And you can even go a little further and describe a simple mark record as like a town that has no roads or any connections to it at all and contrast that with linked data, which is number of cities all connected by roads and other pathways, which can be a good way to highlight the importance of linked data in libraries. One way to help balance cognitive load is an instructional design theory known as backwards instructional design. This approach asks that you start your instructional design backwards and think about the outcomes you want first before planning out how the how of your session. The way of planning, this way of planning goes hand in hand with some of what I've already talked about. And it forces you to think about your audience and what they need to know, and then you can build your lesson from there. If what you're planning is internal to your institution, then early on it can be good to discuss with senior leadership as to what they believe are good outcomes. It can also help you to balance cognitive load by forcing you to ask yourself, what are the learning objectives that I need to get across to this specific audience? And planning your lesson around them and cutting out extraneous content. And lastly, I want to talk about expert reversal effect, which ties into much of what I've been talking about already and relates to what I think is a learning technique that we too often rely on, and that being reading lists. The expert reversal effect so that newer learners need more time and simplified instructions. But as time goes on, you will need to adjust your teaching method to account for learners becoming more knowledgeable, and that can be becoming more knowledgeable. This can be through incorporating more complex material or providing more opportunities for people to seek out information on their own. And that brings me to reading lists. When first introducing a topic, one method I've seen people use is to assign a bunch of materials like readings and or webinars, as opposed to a well-designed syllabus that leads the learner through a topic in such a way that scaffolds their learning. 
In my opinion, this can be too overwhelming for newer learners, as they haven't necessarily been able to build the foundation needed to understand those materials. New learners need more guidance in order to make sense of what they're learning. But once they become more comfortable with the material, then you can start assigning or recommending readings to allow them to expand the scope of their knowledge and seek out information on their own. So to sum up, I hope this presentation has been helpful in illuminating the importance of thinking about how we teach linked data and has given many of you ideas to take back to your own institution. Thank you. And I have uh, put my email there at the bottom, so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and ask them there. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate your presentation. We don't have any questions yet. There, there was one comment um, that I just wanted to read. I think it's valuable. Jesse said, yeah, this idea that learning takes so much time at the beginning is well implemented by the carpentries in their lesson design. Absolutely, yes. I think the library carpentry sessions are very important and very useful for teaching technology in a really simple and easy to get way. There's one question that we've gotten that I'll read off here. Uh, someone asks, are there other analogies in addition to the map cities and roads one that you have found useful when explaining linked data? Honestly, the map one is kind of my go-to one. So I haven't really come up with any others. Um, so not at the moment, I haven't come up with any other analogies, but I would love to hear if anyone else has their own. And I just see a question from Frank here. And at the moment, I don't have a longer, more detailed session. That was supposed to be this one. But this kind of, with various life things, took a little bit of a shorter life. But it's something I am looking to develop in the future. So there's, there's a question that, that's come through. Um, well, there's a few that have all asked this one that I, I said I'd answer. Do you think that starting from linked data discovery queries enabled by linked data would make it easier for librarians to learn linked data? I think it's a really good way. I think playing around with like a Sparkle query or something can be a really good way of showcasing the benefits of linked data. And I know for me personally, seeing like a Sparkle query and the data it could pull up was one of those kind of first moments, first wow moments for myself. So I really think that's a, a good way to introduce people to the idea of linked data. It's, as long as you're not going too in depth into the idea of developing a Sparkle query and all that, just kind of go over the basics and show them kind of what you can get out of it. Here's another, here's another question. A lot of people interested in linked data, but they're also really busy. Since social distancing, we can't offer them food. Do you have any suggestions <laughs> for getting people to attend the learning sessions? Um, I mean, if we can consider knowledge food, but <laughs> yeah, that's difficult. I think the big thing is to kind of highlight the importance of linked data and to kind of showcase that this is kind of where we're moving in the future and just kind of be like, hey, this is this is an important topic in libraries and it's important to have, get this knowledge so that you aren't left in the lurch and kind of confused. But I personally don't know how to attract people to virtual sessions without the enticement of food. So another question, one of the barriers seems to be the following. It's not difficult to understand the idea of the triple or RDF. The difficulty is what to do with them or how do we get things to link? No one explains that during the workshops I've had, that is making the linked data work in a practical project. How would you, how would, how could we demonstrate this? 
Yeah, the practical aspects of linked data can be a little bit difficult to showcase because there really isn't a lot of practical projects out there to view. I think at, when I was at UAL, we were involved with LD4P and ShareVD. So we did have uh, tools like Synopia as well as the ShareVD catalog to kind of show off kind of the practical applications of linked data. I do find something like a lot of triple store uh, programs allow you to kind of show your triples in a big web. And I think that's been useful for me in showing people that kind of this is how all the data connects. Lisa, you're muted if you're... Yeah, sorry, I'm muted. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Adam, have you found that people who are not as knowledgeable in linked data are interested in library technology generally? Might you talk about where those two groups split and where they come together? Thank you. Hmm. That's an interesting question. I've... It's not something I've ever noticed personally that has ever come up where someone's like, hey, I'm interested in linked data, but I don't really care about, say, discovery or what that. It's not something I've ever personally noticed. Um, hmm. Sorry, could you, uh, actually, I'm just looking at the question again, so I don't miss. Um. Yeah, so, yeah, about that library technology split, I don't think there's, I can't imagine there's much of a split between, I've never talked to someone and they've been like, oh, I'm interested in linked data, but I don't care about this aspect of, like, of library technology. I think if you're interested in linked data, there's some aspect, it's, it's library technology, there's got to be some interest there. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I've answered that question very well. I'm not entirely sure how to. Um, so the next question here, for smaller libraries who may not be able to hire someone, are there any corporations or companies that we can source out this type of data? I'm really interested in it, but my library is fairly small. Hmm. I, off the top of my head, I don't, like there are, there is uh, the ShareVD project, there is the, LD4 community, those are, those are, LD4 community for sure is a very good resource to look into uh, linked data, but I'm not sure of any major corporations or companies that are kind of doing linked data training for smaller libraries. All I can really suggest is, and it's something I did a lot of, is kind of look for the resources on your own and kind of teach and teach yourself. Unfortunately, that's kind of the way it is with linked data. There aren't a lot of resources. There are, I believe there's a library juice Academy course on linked data. There's off the top of my head. Uh, the programming historian has a really good short little lesson on linked data too, that I would recommend. But off the top of my head, I'm not really sure how where to source out outsource that sort of linked data knowledge. If we don't leave our graduate coursework prepared to work with linked data, must we go to the self capacitation road? Do librarians need technical skills to work with linked data? I don't think you need a te technical skills to work with linked data. Personally, when I first started working with linked data, I was. Like, I'm not the most techno technologically literate person, personally, and I don't think it's necessary. I think just enthusiasm and interest in the idea of linked data is really important for just helping you to get into it and figure it out. But, but yeah, I think, I think at the moment, linked data is very much a, a self-learning sort of technology in libraries, just because it is still so very new. But 
I don't think techno technological technical skills are something you need to work with linked data. I think you just need an enthusiasm and an interest in the potential that linked data offers. So next question, what is your opinion of linked data creation tools, either standalone or within an ILS that attempt to hide linked data concepts from librarians as a way to ease us into it? Do you think this is detrimental? Hmm. I, I would say yes, that is detrimental. I think the best way to understand linked data is to kind of see the how of how it's working. I think similar what I mentioned earlier to like showcasing a Sparkle query and showing the data it pulls in. I think that's really important to be able to see like just what linked data can do. So I don't think we should be hiding uh, any of the linked data concepts from librarians in our in our data creation tools. Are there good resources you can share that I pass along to my LIS students who are interested in linked data? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the one I had mentioned earlier, the programming historian is a really good, like low level introduction to linked data. I think playing around with linked or sorry, playing around with Wikidata is really good too. I think Wikidata is a really also low barrier of entry way to get into linked data. So I think playing around with Wikidata, the programming historian, I think those are two really good ones for getting into it. And kind of looking at the work that say the LD4P project did and stuff like that are all really good resources. Next question. Uh, could you talk more about your position at U University of Alberta and how you, the, that library came to have someone dedicated to linked data work? Yeah, so my position, it's, it was a residency position or like an internship for new graduates out of library school. And like the position was academic library resident linked data. So my focus was specifically linked data. And that kind of came around, came out because University of Alberta has been working towards linked data integration into cataloging workflows and stuff like that. And that was a strategic priority at the time. So that did allow them to hire me as one of the residents working on that project. But there were a bunch of other, there were, there were two, there were three other residents working on different projects and that's kind of like a yearly thing. You have said we don't need technical skills, and but you do keep mentioning showing Sparkle queries. It seems to me that knowledge of Sparkle and how to implement it is a technical skill. Help me understand how these are contradictory. Yeah, that's a good point. It is a little contradictory in what I've said, and it kind of comes from my own uh, knowledge bias and that I've already kind of worked with that. But I do think that well, you don't necessarily need to teach how to write a Sparkle query. You can show the results of a Sparkle query, and then as long as they understand what a triple is, they can kind of understand that. So while, so yeah, it is a little contradictory, but I think there are ways to show these technical aspects of linked data without getting into the real, like technical meat of those aspects. But yes, that is kind of a line you have to walk. Um, another question, building on that earlier idea of enthusiasm, Aristotle explored the difference between episteme, theoretical knowledge, and techne, technical know-how. Hope I'm saying those Latin words right. In your teaching experience with linked data, what did you see as the relationship between the two in facilitating student learning? Oh, that's a good question. Just give me one second on that one. I think the theoretical knowledge is, oof, this is a tough one, sorry. I don't fully know how to answer that to the best of my ability, but 
I think it is kind of a fine line you have to walk with linked data is that kind of theoretical knowledge is important to kind of understand the why of linked data, but it is, it is a technical, and I'm going back to the last question, I am kind of contradicting myself here. It is a technical skill in and of itself. Um, so I think you really just kind of have to balance because there are people that will they'll see some technical stuff and they will zone out or you may get a little bit too in depth of the theoretical aspect of things and they will, they'll also zone out. So you kind of have to play that fine line between the theoretical backing of linked data as well as kind of the technical aspects that go into it. And yeah, as the next question says, learning mark is also a technical kind of aspect too. And personally, I found learning linked data much easier than learning Mark, but I'm not a cataloger by trade. Do you have an elevator speech that you use to talk with administration? and up about the value of, of investing in linked data activities? Yeah, so my kind of go-to on that is the kind of pitch that linked data allows our library data to go out to the wider web. You mentioned that students don't always use the library catalog anymore. Google is their first choice. So to say like, hey, if, if a student Google something, they'll be able to come up with our library resources like that. They don't have to go through our library catalog. That's and stuff like that. And just kind of showing the, the linking potential of linked data, for lack of a better term, can kind of help. I never really did. The, the, the groundwork for linked data was already set before I started my position at the time, so I never really had to do that. We have a, we have a question to just get more information about your background. So what is your background ter in terms of degrees and, and uh, experience? With oh, well, I mean, I have my MLIS and my undergraduate degree is highly unrelated to libraries in any way. But yeah, I have my MLIS. I did it at the University of Alberta. And so yeah, I have just a standard library background and got interested in cataloging and metadata. And that was it for me. Just just to follow up with that, Adam, um, are there, do you have any technical background? Are you self-taught with some of the technical? Oh yeah, I'm mostly self-taught with most of my technical skills just kind of I was very lucky in the positions I worked throughout library school were all very open to me learning the things I'm interested in so I was able to develop a backing in RDF sparkle stuff like that while I was still in library school and in the residency position I held as well but I am mostly self-taught as the technical skills weren't really something that was taught as much at library school. Well, looks like we don't have any more questions for you, Rob, or uh, Adam, sorry. Um, <laughs> We appreciate you taking time to share with us about this. This is a good food for thought, to, some things to think about in terms of how we communicate and teach linked data and learn linked data. So uh, just want to thank you for this and uh, thanks everyone for attending. Thank oh, we you. Got one, we got one more, if you don't oh. mind, Adam, taking one more question that just popped in. This will be our last question that we'll field here. What would you suggest to start showing the potential of linked open data, subject headings or converting mark to linked data? Um, I would maybe go with neither the ones I, I think the potential of linked data, I think showing, showing the results of a Sparkle query and, 
or just showing the connections in say like link data triple store or using or showing wiki data i think those are the best ways to kind of show the potential of link data certainly you could convert a mark record into link data but unless you kind of understand rdfxml and can kind of see how those triples would play with other data it can be kind of hard to show the potential of linked data. So me personally, but everyone's going to be different for me personally, kind of showing those linkages that kind of come out of a triple store if you have access to one or using like a Sparkle query and wiki data. I think that's kind of the best way to show off the advantages of linked data. Awesome. Um, and with that, Donna just uh, sent in a, a link to a YouTube video from Will Kent. He provided a good wiki data uh, intro. So I think it's one that, that uh, attendees can look to it for learning and for examples of how to teach it. So absolutely. I have watched many a YouTube video that have helped me in my learning for sure. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Adam. I appreciate uh, you doing this for us. Thank you very much. Thank you.